State Television, 8.15 this morning, Ina Skinner. We'll get to Cam Newton in just a second. But first, ooh, oh, professional basketball in France. DJ Steffens flying in, throwing down his own miss. I don't know what part of this young man's game needs improvement. It must be a bunch of it, because he only played one game in the NBA last year. But with that athleticism, they should fight. Whatever you need to do, man, your left hand, your jump shot. Oh, you know he it. can't shoot, man. Dude can jump like that. You know the reason why he ain't in the Dude can't shoot, man. Next up, Giants practice. Daniel Jones dropping the dime to Benny Fowler, who uh, makes a nice catch here. Keeps both feet inbound. If there was an MVP of the preseason, you can say Dave Gettleman, his pickup, Daniel Boone Ooh, Jones, oh, is wow. it. That's, wow! That's Who played right? dimes? Who? I'm just, I've never seen a narrative switch so quick before a regular season game's even been played. I'm all, I'm all, all right, here out. we go, here we go. Video of the day, check out. This eight-year-old oh. goes behind the back twice. Yeah, he can't play for me, man. One. I know y'all parents is excited about, oh, look at giant little cute, man, your football fundamentals is <laughs> awful. What would you right. tell the opposing team, see? Oh, we getting ready to tackle, tackle the ball. And take his little head off. That, this dude's just scared. Hold man. on a second. They ain't trying to hit 83. What you doing? Get off the ground. So an eight you get worms <laughs> on the ground. Get up, son. Get up. Keep your head up. An eight, See what you hit. An eight-year-old, you say tackle the ball. At what age do you tell him hit him where they've been? Oh, I need to know that he know what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's Maybe 12-year-old. If he's a Division One prospect, I love it. Man, hit him around his hip area. Oh, yeah. So cute. Time for drawing a blank. Ron Rivera says he's got no doubt Cam Newton will be ready to go in week one. The Panthers will need Cam to be 100% in that tough NFC South division. See, the NFC South quarterback you would want starting for your team in week one is blank. I got much respect for Drew Breesy, but I'm going with Matty Ice because I like the other parts around it. Calvin Ridley coming off a 10 touchdown season. Best wide receiver season as a rookie since OBJ's rookie year. Him and Julio had a great offseason together. He's a hard worker. I'm going with Matty Ice because the Saints defense gets off to a slow start. So that's the only reason why I'm not going with Drew Brees. If it were NFC South quarterback I'd want starting the final game of the season, I might say Matt Ryan because I have concerns about Drew Brees after last year's ability to hold up over the course of the year. But week one, I am going with Drew Brees. And opponent matters in this regard. Atlanta's got at Minnesota, while New Orleans has Houston. Houston probably won't have Jadevi on Clowney. We don't know if Clowney's going to be on the roster at that point. Almost certainly won't be playing. So Drew Brees, after the first three months of last season, he was neck and neck and not ahead of Patrick Mahone for league MVP before he fell off. I think he starts this year really well. See if he can finish it better than he did last year. All right, you mentioned Jadavian Clowney. The Texans are reportedly trying to trade the three-time Pro Bowl pass rusher. He's met with the Dolphins, but would prefer to land with either the Eagles or the Seahawks. So, Nick, the team you want to see Clowney play for this year is blank. You asked me this a few weeks ago, and before there had been a, a supposed interest, I'd mentioned the Eagles. I think the Eagles have the right players to trade to the Texans because of their depth on the offensive line. I also think Philadelphia, if they could add another pass rusher similar to what they had when they won the Super Bowl, that rotation, I think it's a great fit. It would take Howie Roseman doing some real salary cap mechanics there because they're up against it. But I say Philadelphia. I think it would work for the Texans, work for the player, work for the Eagles. Yeah, I think the... The climate for Jadavian Clowney around the league is, is lukewarm. People don't believe he's a great talent, body, he's been injured an awful lot, but he has no special rush move. He's got no unstoppable. What, tell me what he does better than anyone else in the league. Uh, nothing. So to me, I believe he's overrated as a player. I don't believe the Eagles will make that type of investment. He's better off staying right there with the Texans. They don't have a general manager. He need to fool somebody <laughs> into paying him, sign that tenure, and get on to camp because I don't believe they're going to invest him in a long-term contract because they're concerned about his body. All right, moving on. Aaron Rodgers was highly complimentary of his new head coach, Matt LaFleur. Rodgers said... LaFleur has done some really smart things with the offense. The Packers looking to win their first division title since 2016. See, the winner of the NFC North this season will be blank. The Bears. I believe top to bottom, they're the best team. I'm scared of their kicking situation. Given the way their season ended last year, I believe Trubisky makes the leap. Their coach as an offensive mind, you could see being tutored under Andy Reid, the creativity. I believe that's going to go to another level in their defense. With Khalil Mack and the whole offseason and training camp, the way he started last year, 
Dub Bears. I might be picking them for the Super Bowl. Just a little preview. I really like the Bears' defense. I really like their coach. I think he's underrated. And Mitch Trubisky is a big year for him, but I think he's probably been slightly underrated by the general public for what he did last year. But despite all that, I'm going to go with the Green Bay Packers. They've got maybe the best player in football. I think they finally spent smart money he's on He's better than Patty Mahomes? Did I Nick Wright just say that? No, because I said maybe. I said well, what's got the maybe on? This is a show. You can't got, be, well, maybe we'll be here tomorrow. Got, Man, say something. They've got the best player in the NFC in Aaron Rodgers. Oh. And so, well, I said something there. And so, I, I'm going to go with Aaron Rodgers. You said he hadn't won the division since 2016. 2016. You can't be the most talented quarterback maybe in NFL history, other than Patty Mahomes, of course, and go three straight years without, in your prime without winning your division. Green Bay Packers is my pick. All right, moving on to Von Miller. Hall of Famer Bruce Smith was singing his praises, saying Miller is, quote, a very special talent. He's got the full package. Since being drafted back in 2011, his 98 sacks are the most in the league. CC, the best defensive player in the AFC, is blank. Ooh, man, I like Von Miller. I like it. I like what my guy Bruce Smith. Bruce and I are good friends. Bruce loves football, loves pass rushers. But I'm going to go with Stephon Gilmore. They're in New England. Underrated as a player. I believe their secondary will be the best in football. Now, I am concerned. They got some little issues with one of their safeties and everything <laughs> as far as little, little product okay. being at his house and everything. Oh, I yeah, so we got kids, man, watching the show. Okay. Just powdery substance. So, Stephon Gilmore shut down corner with Belichick. Add more responsibility. Last year, he comes up with that big interception in the Super Bowl. They depend on him to be great. I believe he's underrated watching play this Stephon year. Gilmore is a great, great player, and it proved the Patriots right once again, one of the rare big-money free agent signings they make. However, I'm going to go with Bruce Smith. Bruce Smith, who I think, by the way, might be the most underrated all all time great he never gets talked about when we talk about the greatest defensive players ever mm -hmm. and he absolutely should i think he's right well, i'm with him talking he talked about oh, okay all right when you he might yeah. talk Chris about i know them shows they don't talk they about don't talk me. about let me, me tell you like, you always talk about reggie white Chris. no no what about me? yeah okay but von miller's my answer von miller really since two years before they won the super bowl maybe he's been holding that mantle as the best pass rusher in the afc the best defensive player in the afc so i'm going to go with von miller Got better Chubb on the other side. Absolutely. It's harder to double team him. I think he had 14 and a half sacks last year. Von Miller. All right, take a break. Coming up, are the Cowboys prepared for life without Zeke? That's next on First Things First. Hey, man, you and the dude smoking. Bro, you, you, you coughing up some. You all right? <laughs> smoking them Winstons with no filter, boy. Look at you.